Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Glory. Worship him. Praise the Lord. Worship him. Glory to your name, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. They were all gathered in one place. Hallelujah. Or on one accord. Glory to God. Then there was a sound from heaven. Praise God. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise. We believe you, God. We believe God. I believe God. Glory to God. I believe God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. Glory to God. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Glory. Welcome to Morning Decree 802. You heard it right. 802. Praise God. Glory to God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of Jesus. God will give you praise this morning. We worship you. We join the angels this morning in praise and adoration. We join the birds of the field today in praise and adoration. The hills and the valley, the Bible says, clap their hands. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. God, we give you praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Worship you, Jesus. Glory to God. Whether it's the start of your day or the end of your work shift, give him praise. Father, we magnify you with thanksgiving. <laughs> we magnify you. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy. Worthy are you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, we give you praise. Worthy is the Lamb of God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Glory to God. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You got breath in your body this morning. Give him praise. You hear me? <laughs> Glory to God. If you're drawing breath, give him praise. Use it to give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Not one zero single weapon that's formed against you shall prosper, shall not have the final say. Give him praise this morning. In your prison of struggle, give him praise this morning. Great is the Lord. It is greatly to be praised. Glory to God. Welcome. Glory to God. Come on in, everybody. Welcome to 802 of our morning decree. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, I give you praise, Master. Master, I give you praise. Master, I give you praise. Master, I give you praise. Glory to God. Master, I give you praise. Master, I give you praise. Glory to God in the highest. Bless your holy name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, bless the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning. As you're coming in, do me the honor of sharing this. Lani and I are up every single morning. I want to give you praise to today. Hallelujah. Give you praise, Master. Oh, worthy is the Lamb of God. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. 
Good morning, Sister Valerie. Blessings to you. Good morning to everybody. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. He's our rock. He's our salvation. He's our deliverer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I challenge you to give him praise no matter how you're feeling, no matter what your day was like yesterday, no matter what your night was like, no matter what it is right now, this very second, give him praise. Just say, God, I give you praise. I magnify you. He's still worthy, y'all. Come on, right? No matter what's happening, he is still worthy. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what's going on, he is still worthy of praise. Is he not? Is he not? He's still glorious no matter what's going down. Come on, he's still honorable no matter what's happening. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Glory to God that takes away what? The sins of the world. Praise his holy name. He's worthy. The Bible says he's worthy. I know him to be worthy. Hallelujah. I know him to be worthy. To see him is to is to worship him. Glory to God. It is incongruent to see Jesus, to know Jesus, and not worship Jesus. Impossible. It is incongruent. It cannot, it cannot exist. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Decree 802. Thank you for being on this morning, and uh, you know, worship is a 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 is an interrupter. Worship will interrupt your your flow, because when you when we you and I worship, we connect with the ongoing unbroken worship of the Lord God Himself in heaven, and so we connect into that realm. That's what worship will do. It'll cause you to be connected to another realm. And um, and so it's just on, ongoing there, right? Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. Please, as you're coming in, share this morning. Jesus is alive. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise today. Thank you for this opportunity to look into your word and to your truth. Thank you for a peace that passes all understanding. That's guarding our heart and our minds in Christ Jesus today. Thank you for that. Glory. And as men and women come on today, Father, give us greater grace to see your truth today, your heart today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. God is healing somebody who is suffering from some complications as it relates to a surgery of some sort. There was a, um, I don't know, I, again, I'm not a medical person in that sense, so I don't, I don't really know, but I do know that there was some kind of mesh involved or gauze involved. I see the intertwining of gauze and um, there is some complications. It could be an infection of some sort, but I'm telling you now, Jesus is healing you of that complication. It's not going to get any worse. It's going to get better from this moment on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So you might as well go ahead and receive that. If, you're, if that's you, I want you to type that in today. Hey, folks, guess what? Guess what? There's power in the very word of God. There's power in the very word of God. I want to draw a distinction between the Bible and the Word of God for a moment. The Bible, in one aspect, is the collection of the words of God as delivered to and through prophets. That being said, the Bible by itself, sitting on your desk, my desk, in our, in our car, in your purse, wherever, does not in and of itself have power just to be sitting there. The Bible, the Word of God rather, has power when it is uh, received into the hearts of men and women, then released through their mouth. Are you hearing me? It has creative power. 
And that's why as you're listening this morning, which is no, no accident, by the way, that you're watching this morning, whoever you are, from wherever you're coming from, it's not an accident today because the Word of God has power to address whatever it is that is, that is, that is going on in your life. I'm telling you that. <clears throat> I mean, the Bible is replete with examples of that, and people who are watching right now have testified to that. I want you to encourage somebody this morning. If you have been healed through um, a morning decree message, meaning you've been on, you were on live and somehow what was said brought healing or a miracle in your life, I want you to type in me. Would you type in me? Because I've got a sneaking suspicion that there are some people on here right now who need a miracle and they need to know that Jesus still does those. Just type it in. I mean, you know, I mean, don't do it to encourage me in that sense. I want you to type it in and, um, and you know for a fact that during a morning decree, Jesus healed you. Just type it in. Type it in. All right. See on Periscope, Facebook, I see it. Uh, the free conference calls on mute right now, so I can't hear their testimonies. But, but there are several people. And so how does that happen? That happens because of the Word of God. There's power in the Word of God. No word is with no word from God is without power, and possibility of fulfillment. So within the Word of God itself, there is power to fulfill. Are you hearing me? There are dozens of people who are, who are, who are commenting on being healed. And yet he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not a respecter of persons in that regard. He respects faith, though. Are you hearing me? And so in the Word of God will give you the requisite faith in order to be healed by the same. Good morning to everybody. Glory to God. I would love to see or hear your testimonies if you'd inbox me, I am me, or whatever you call that, you know. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. And if he's done that, won't he do more? And he can do more. But it goes back to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Any man or woman of God who got any sense at all recognize that it is not them. They are simply, we are simply, I am simply a delivery system. Amen. A delivery system. All right. Glory to God. Listen, we want to pick up where we left off with dealing with the, the antidote to anxiety. Anxiety comes um, for various reasons, and the enemy loves to exacerbate whatever's going on to heighten one's anxiety. Because when you have anxieties, fear, fret, worry, it digs up or unearths the faith that's inside of you. I mean, I'm talking in a negative way, though. It's like a seed that's dropped in the soil that you keep digging up. Anxiety, fear, fret has a tendency then to dig up what's been planted. Are you hearing me? To unsettle. And so the enemy loves to use the tool of anxiety. And, he, and, it's, and it's often postulated as a two-letter word called if. What if you don't get healed? What if it doesn't work? What if you don't get the money? What if he doesn't come home? She doesn't come home. What if I'll never get married? What if, you know, all of these what ifs. And, um, and, and tied to that is the anxiety that follows. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Right? You know, oh my God, what are we going to do? Lord, don't you care that we're perishing? His disciples said. So, so, so there has to be an antidote to that. And, and um, I'm running the risk this morning of talking about an antidote, um, but you've got to have another series of, of thoughts to go along with that. But for the sake of our time, we just must get right, get right to it this morning. The antidote. So we talked about yesterday how, how communing, communing or communion with the Father in Jesus' name is the is the basis for the whole deal. That if you and I are going to have hope of living in peace, regardless of contrary circumstances, learning to live in peace, we we have to have a communion with the Father. 
denominations such as Episcopal churches or um, Roman Catholic churches and some others speak of a communion, meaning you, you're part of their community. And, and when you and I walk in that level of relationship, because it can for every single one of us, starting this very second, by the way, we, we walk in a communion. And it's from that communion that we actually, actually begin to have power and authority over stuff. Now, why? how can I say that? I say that because, because as I'm in communion with the Father in Jesus' name, and I'm relishing in that, and I'm, I'm sharing my heart, and he's sharing his heart, and I'm hearing his thoughts, hearing his words. I get loaded up just like a gun. I get loaded up like a weapon. And at that point in time, I can then begin to act like God, because I'm thinking like God, act like God, and speak like God. Didn't say I was God. I began to think like God, speak like God, and act like God. So stay with me, all right? So go with me to John chapter, John chapter 6, please. This is a uh, portion of scripture that I, I've uh, been working with for years now. And um, I keep coming back to it. One of the reasons why Jesus was so effective, I mean on point, never failed in his, in his earthly life, was because he had unbroken communion with the Father. Unbroken communion. Unbroken. He would get up a great while before day and commune with the Father. The Bible says he, with, he with, withdrew and prayed. The Bible says even when his second cousin, John the Baptist, gave his life for righteousness, the Bible says immediately he withdraw, he withdrew, withdrew, right? So, so there's something that comes out of that communion. Now, the, 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 the challenge, though, for us is that we think complaining is the same as communion. We're complaining to God about our challenge, our situations, our upsets. We think com complaining is the same as communion. It is, it is not. Although in your communion, there may be an element of that, but you got to move from com com complaining to this thing we call confessing or confession. But, but, but if you're hanging with me, we're going to go somewhere with this now, right? So, so again, out of this communion. So in John chapter 6, the Gospel of John chapter 6, let's, let's go there. And um, I want you to come on in now. If you've got any anxiety whatsoever, you're struggling with something, believe in God, waiting on something to happen, uh, I need you to come on into this now. I believe it's going to help. It's going to help. Glory to God. I feel the help of God right now. Glory to God. All right, John chapter 6. Did I say John? Uh, do, or do I mean stay, stay, stay with me now? I'm, I'm, you know, you know how I do. I'm working without a net here. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. Go to Mark chapter six. John two. Trying to work also, but Mark chapter six is where I want to. I want to take off from Mark chapter six. Now here Jesus is talking to his disciples and and um, teaching people and. And the Bible says that, that it was getting late, getting dark, if you will. <clears throat> the street lights in Jerusalem were on, <laughs> and it was time to get home. And, and Jesus tells his disciples, um, in retort to them about setting the people away, Jesus tells the disciples, no, no, you got to give them something, something to to." You give them something to eat. All right, go with me. John chapter 6 here. Let's go to verse 37. So he's telling his disciples, tell the people something. Now look at this, please. He says there in verse 37, he said, give them something to eat. And they said, shall we go buy 200 denarii or penny worth worth of bread and give them something to eat? They had the money to feed 5,000 people, but... But Jesus didn't want to answer the problem that way. 
Now, come on, stay with me now, folks. Folks, is it not true that there are times when we're facing situations when we actually uh, don't know what to do or have in our minds, have on hand what we need in order to solve the problem? Am I right about that? Some of you are facing situations this very second and you don't have what is needed. It's not your imagination. You do not have what is physically needed. You don't have enough money, time, connections, hookups. You don't know what to do right now. Don't know where to go right now. You, you just don't know, right? That's not a negative confession. That's just knowing your facts. And in this case, in, in Mark chapter 6, they're faced with that situation now. Come on now. This is going to be an antidote to anxiety. So stay with me. And um, and I keep, I got so many Bibles open here. I keep th throwing myself off here. So he says to them, well, how many loaves do you have? How much do you, what do you have on hand? And before they could answer, verse 38 says, he told them to go and see. Now, this is important, folks. Stay with me. It's more than just giving people, you know, a happy meal and, and a fish sandwich. Look at this. He tells them, go and find out. Now, this is a really important element here, and what I would argue I'm not a fan of, I'll just be honest with you, is the fact that you got to know your facts. <clears throat> facts are your friends, in that sense. You got to know the facts. You got to know what you're working with. Don't guess, no. Don't guess, no. Don't guess, no. Be honest about that, in other words. Be honest about that. Be honest about, I don't have the money. Be honest about, I don't, I don't have what's going on. Be honest about you know what, I'm really at the end of my end on this situation. Be honest about, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not tracking today, Lord. Got to be honest about it. You can't get help unless you're honest. Are you hearing me? Right? You can't get help if you're going to spiritualize stuff as opposed to dealing with the reality of, of things. Amen. You don't live in reality. We got to at least start with a reality. All right, let's go further. So he says in verse 39, he said, he said, um, how many loaves do you have? Verse 38. And when they knew, they said five and two fish. So they had to go do an inventory. They had to check whoever was handling the groceries. Verse 39, and he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon green grass. I love this illustration because the Amplified Version talks about having them sit down like potted plants. So, so before there could be a release, there needs to be a, a full accounting of where we're at. And then there had to be order. But what's interesting, before there could be order, there had to be the, the follow-through of instructions. Now, here we go. If you want to get out of perpetual, consistent, constant anxiety, you're, you and I are going to have to be willing to listen to instruction and bring what we know into order. Are you hearing that? Bring what you know into order. That is... I can't, man, I feel God's help on that for somebody for real strong this morning. One of the reasons why you're living in consistent anxiety is things are out of order. But the things that are out of order are with under or within your control to order. There's something you yet can do. Are you hearing me? Things are a mess. I hear you. I hear you. But there is things you can do. And so unless you follow through with that, my friend, you don't have a whole lot of hope for getting out of anxiety. Are you hearing me? So here it is. Come on now. I hope, I hope, I hope somebody's hearing this this morning because there's miracle power in what I'm talking about. There's a supernatural release in, 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 this, in, this, in this revelation. All right? All right. So we'll go a bit further here. So then, then he goes on to say, he commanded them, Mark 6, 39, commanded them to make them sit down in companies upon green grass in ranks of 50 and hundreds. Now, there's, there's reported 5,000 men here at least, plus family. No megaphone, no PA system, no cell phone, no iPhone, no Samsung. They had to, these 12 guys had to run through the crowd and pass the message. 
that's going to take a minute. Please make note of that. When you're getting an order, it's going to take a little bit to get an order. Are you hearing me? No Facebook. That's right, Pastor Jermaine, no Facebook. It's going to take a, it's going to take a little something to get an order. Are you hearing me? And, and especially if getting an order relies upon some other people, you know, it can take a minute. But if you don't do this, family, you're not going to get out of anxiety world. Are you hearing me? You're going to live in perpetual, um, crippling kind of anxiety. This is critical. I mean, stay with me, family. All right. So, so he tells them, do that. Say, so rush to the rings. Sit down. Everybody sit down. Sit down. Everybody get down. Can you imagine that kind of chaos? 5,000 people. Sit down. Everybody sit down. Sit down. No, 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 no. There's 52 people in that group. I need 50 in this group. I need 100 in that group. Absolute chaos, right? But if you're going to come out of a chaotic, chaotic state, you got to be willing to put in this, put in this time, all right? This is critical. Let's go further. Verse 40, 41. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked into heaven and blessed them. So, so the, 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 the disciples reported back, we got five loaves, two fish. Jesus says, okay, before I do what I do, I need you guys to get them sit down in 50s and 100s. Order precedes overflow. Did you hear that? Order precedes overflow. You cannot expect a miracle when you're unwilling to, to come out of the mess. Are you hearing me, right? Order precedes overflow. If you want to get ready to receive the shipment and the delivery and the overwhelming blessing of God, I would suggest you get your room together. Are you hearing me? I suggest you order yourself. I suggest you clean out your junk drawer. All right? There's a revelation in that for somebody. You want, you're waiting on God to send you the right person. Stop messing around with the wrong people. Come on now. All right? So then the Bible says, he took the five loaves and the two fish. Now, again, I don't, I don't want to go into the, the depth of teaching on this area when he says he took the loaves. It means he received them from these guys. But the Bible says he looked up into heaven. Right? He looked up to heaven. Now, here we go. This goes back to the antidote for, for, for coming over, overcoming anxiety, communion. See, Jesus in this moment in time was doing something he had done many, many, many times before. He looked to heaven. And when, when I say that, I don't want you to think that he simply just kind of tilted his head back and change his gaze. But when we study out that word, it means to peer into the seat of order eternal. To peer into the seat of order eternal. Which means that Jesus looked past the first and second heaven into the abode of God. He looked into the realm of the spirit, we could say. He saw perfection. Not just perfection as it relates to, to heaven itself, but he saw the will of the Father for the situation that comes out of communion. S Folks, I'm telling you there's something in here, in here for us. When we are faced with with, with more bills than money, more pain than pleasure, more anxiety than peace, we have a tendency to continue to look at those things as if by looking at those things themselves, they're going to change by themselves. As opposed to getting, gathering and getting the vision that God the Father would have for your situation. This is important, folks. Please hear me. You and I have to have a vision of what it should be and look like. You have to have a vision for you being healed. If you can't see yourself healed, I, I, you know it's going to be hard for you to get there. If you can't see yourself in the land of more than enough and barely enough, it's going to be very hard to get there. If you can't see yourself as, as overcoming, I, it's going to be hard for you to overcome, right? So there has to be a vision. So where did Jesus get the vision for the outcome he needed or desired. 
He got the vision out of his communion when he looked into the seat of order eternal. Every intercessor, everyone who claims to be an intercessor, a prayer partner, folks, you can't pray out of your soul. You got to pray out of your spirit and what your spirit re, uh, sees from the abode of God. Jesus, it was said of Jesus that he, Jesus said it, not, did, not just said of Jesus, Jesus did this. He only said what he heard the Father say. Check it. It's in there. And he only did what he saw the father do. Wow. So his success was guaranteed. Why? Because he already caught the picture of heaven. Father, what, what, what's the outcome of these two loaves and five fish or five loaves and two fish? What's the outcome of that? Oh, we're going to feed 20,000 people. Oh, I got that. And then what did he do? He began to speak it. So stay with me now. So unless you and I have a vision of the desired outcome, it is going to be extremely difficult to get there. All right, come on, folks. That's why having, you know, people talk about vision boards and various things. Call it what you want to call it, but you got to have a picture of where you're going rather than the picture of what you have. The picture of where you're going overcomes the negative that is happening right now. You've got to develop your negative by opening the shutter for more light. I wish, I wish my... My brother, my friend, Rufus Abdullah, was, was teaching this because he could do a lot better given he is a professional photographer. Right? In order to, in order to develop my negative, I have got to, I've got to expose it to a certain light. If I want a new picture, I've got to open the shutter to get new light. And so Jesus, out of his communion with his father, unbroken communion with his father, was able to get a picture of a future reality, a picture of a future reality. Now, it's not just enough, though, to have the picture. We're going to find it. It's in here. Check it out. So they're sitting down in groups of 50 and 100, and um, um, they're doing what they got to do, right? And then he took the five loaves. He got the five loaves and two fish. They had to be very small loaves, don't you think? He wasn't working with a whole lot. The Bible says he looked into heaven. It means to peer into the seat of order eternal. Glory to God. Keep going back to this thing, man. I am telling you, in our time of prayer, meditation, fasting, what you, the ultimate goal is to see God, man, is to see what he's saying, to see what he's, his heartbeat on the situation, not just the complaining party. Oh, I got to tell Jesus all my problems. Yes, but once you get done, get God's vision, get God's mind. All right, come on, folks. Glory to God. You want to get out that wheelchair, get a vision of you walking again. Glory to God. I understand the facts. I understand what the doctors are saying. But get a picture from the word of God, from our Father, in terms of your future reality. Glory to God. Let's go further. I feel God's help, man. I really do. I really do. And the next verse says, or next next aspect of Mark chapter 6, verse 41, the Bible says, and he blessed it. So he's got the five of those two fish. Jesus is tilting his head back figuratively, right? Gazing into heaven. He saw God's mind, God's will, God's thought regarding the outcome of the five loaves and two fish. And what did the Bible say? The Bible says he blessed it. Now, this blessing, folks, is not where we get the word Eucharist from or thanksgiving. He didn't say, Father, I just want to thank you for these five loaves and two fish. Now, there's nothing been wrong with that, but that's not the word that's used here. The word that's used here is the word eulogy. You've heard me teach this before, right? But I, I don't think it's going to hurt for us to talk about it again. Is the word eulogy. Now, when do you give a eulogy? You give a eulogy at the end of a person's life. Are you hearing me? Right? They're already gone to heaven. And we're having a memorial service or a funeral service or a celebration of life service. Right? And then someone gives what? A eulogy. Eulogy. E-U. Well. L-O-G-Y or L-O-G. O is logo or logos. So it means to speak well of or to give a good word. 
So a eulogy is a giving of a good word. So Jesus gave a good word over the five loaves and two fish. Where did he get the good word from? He didn't just pull it out of positive thinking. He didn't just pull it out of, I'm just going to say something good here. He got the good word from the good, good father. I'm telling you how to come out of anxiety. You go into a place of communion. You get God's mind on the specific situations that you're dealing with. And then something else happens. The Bible says he blessed it. So he got the, he got the five loaves and two, two fish. And guess what he does, though? He gets the eulogy. And he speaks it. He didn't quote it. He spoke it. He blessed it. I need something to bless. Give me something to bless. When you bless something, Brother Teddy, I feel God's help, man. When you bless something, he took the five loaves and two fish in his hands. And he looked into heaven and he got back down. He said, he said, he said, bread, multiply. Bread, multiply. He didn't say bread, you're only five strong and you're not enough for a happy meal. He said, bread, multiply. He said, fish, multiply. So in your situations, folks, you, my situations, we get a commune, out of the communion, we get the eulogy of God. And we begin to speak that thing, declare the mind of God into the thing that's got to change. You get God's mind. You, t you look at your limbs and you look at your hands that, that's, that's being crippled by arthritis. And you say, you say, hands, I got a eulogy for you. You shall work again. I command you in the name of Jesus. I bless you and command you to function. I, that's what we're talking about here, folks. And But when we spend so much of our effort and time, and I'm in this category, so much, so much effort and time in just trying to lay out the problem as if that's going to change things. We need to be more specific about what we need to see happen based upon the vision we get from God regarding it. Now, you don't got to go into a trance to get this vision. There's a vision revealed in the word of God, codified there, black and white and black, white and red. You got it right there. But that's what Jesus did. He declared the will of God in the situation. Now, again, five loaves, two fish to feed 5,000 plus people. It is hopeless, y'all. It is hopeless. There's no use trying to figure, trying to, trying to have your mind do all these bending things to try to figure out how we're going to make these crumbs, crumbs stretch. You're in situations, facing situations right now in which there is, no, listen to me. There ain't no way in the natural this thing can come to pass while you're in the land of the living. Are you hearing me? Some of the deficits, financial and otherwise, are so far gone and so profound. Let's just be real about it. There ain't no way. You don't have enough connections, enough money, enough people. You can't do enough GoFundMe pages. You, you hear me? You can't beg enough. You can't sell your body. You, you Listen to me. You can't sell another car. You can't give up another house. Listen, it is so far gone that unless there is a eulogy of God regarding it, there ain't no hope. So stop stressing about it. As I've come to find, I can't worry about what I can't worry about. That's been my new revelation, man. I cannot worry about what I can't worry about. In other words, me worrying about it ain't going to change a thing, so I might as well stop it. Just stop it. It ain't going to change a thing. Are you hearing me? Right? Man, I feel God's help right now. I hope, I hope somebody else is getting this, and I'm not just being happy by myself right now. <laughs> right? So, so he blessed the bread, man. He said, bread multiply. Bread multiply. Bread multiply. And then guess what he did? Guess what he did? Guess, 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 guess what he did? 
Hold on. Brother Ted, that's powerful, man. I had an item at home that I thought was ruined from war. I let it sit there for a couple of months. I'm sure there's more to the testimony. I can't see it. But but, but many times in our worry, we just let things pile up. We let things go, right? But he, but he said, bread multiply, fish multiply, right? No change, no change, no change. Check this out, no change. The fish didn't start multiplying, having guppies all of a sudden, all over, you know? No change. But guess what happened next? Guess what happened next? The Bible says, and then he broke the bread. Whoa. Can you imagine a person in, 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 in seed 485B on the left side of, this, of, the, of, the, of the yard here saying, did this dude just break the bread? Did, did, he, did, he, did he really just break the bread? Is he going to take a piece off for himself? I'm sure, you know, they were, they were tripping. But hear me, folks, sometimes, sometimes, after we hear God's direction on a situation, sometimes it can look a lot worse before it gets a lot better. I got anybody to testify to that? You're fasting and praying and things seem to go worse. They don't seem to get better right away. Right? They just seem to go left when you're trying to go right. You're trying to bring the car left and it wants to go right. You're trying to save some money and all of a sudden you get two flat tires on the same day. Are you hearing me? Right? You call yourself trying to get your marriage in order and all of a sudden something more dumb happens. Come on, right? Come on, come on, come on. But just hear me, folks. The blessing was put in place before the breaking. Are you hearing me? The blessing, Dr. Sabrina, was already put in place before the, before, before the breaking. So, so you're blessed despite being broken. Did you hear that? You're blessed. You have been eulogized. Your final outcome it's not going to change because you are in a broken state at the present time. Come on, folk. Get your mind off of that right now. Yes, you're broken. Yes, you're hurting. Yes, you don't know what to do. But you have been eulogized, hallelujah, <laughs> by the best eulogist there is. He's already declared over your life that you are, in fact, an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. He has already declared over you that you are you are you are you are what the head and not the tail. He's already declared over you that I've brought you in to the wealthy place. I've already declared over you that you have been healed by the very wounds and stripes of Jesus. Yea, even before the foundation of the world was laid, it has already happened. Are you here? You have been eulogized before you even died. Glory to God. He finished you before he even started you. Can I say that again? He finished you before he even started you. In other words, you were a fate complete in the mind of God before there was a heartbeat in the womb of your mother. Before there was a beginning, God already finished you because he starts at the end and backs up and says, let me put it together. Are you hearing me? And so despite the brokenness that you in, you're in, despite the pain that you're in, despite the, the upset that you're experiencing, despite the diagnosis that you received, that doesn't change a blessed thing. Are you hearing me? Because it shall be even as it was spoken unto me by the Lord. Come on, people. Come on. Come on. You want to talk about saying amen? That's what that means, actually. It means it shall be even as it was spoken unto me by the Lord. And this is what must come out of our spirit. This is what must be declared. This is what must be announced. It shall be even as it was spoken unto me by the Lord. How it's going to happen? I don't know. Who he's going to use to make it happen? Don't have a an idea. How he's going to turn it around? Don't know. How he's going to put your heart back together? Not even a clue. But it shall be even as it was spoken unto me by the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
I feel like running around my desk right now. I'm telling you, glory to God. Glory to God. It's got to come out of your spirit. Now hear me, folks. You can, you can, you can, you can declare out of your spirit with tears coming down your eyes. Right? You don't have to, listen, you don't have to feel what you're declaring. You just have to have faith in what you're declaring. It shall be, even though it was spoken unto me by the Lord, as you're, as you're taking deep breaths from an oxygen tank. Are you hearing me? It shall be, even though it was spoken to me by the Lord. And you can't even speak right now because of a trach. It shall be, even though it was spoken to me by the Lord. Well, while your limbs aren't even moving, it shall be even what was spoken unto me by the Lord, right? It shall be, I am blessed. You might as well say that out loud. I am blessed. Come on, can I just need 10 people to type that in real quick. Just type in, I am blessed. You'll never see that word again. I pray in Jesus' name the same way. I am blessed. In other words, Pastor T, I have been eulogized. I have been eulogized. No need to come up, preacher. I've already been eulogized. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. I have what he says I have. Glory to God. I walk in divine favor. I don't walk in divine blessing. I, I, walk, I walk in a greater anointing. I walk in, in unstoppable power in Jesus' name. I am blessed. I have been eulogized, Elder Sandra. Come on now. I have been eulogized. Bless his holy name. Glory to God. So when you say now I'm blessed and highly favored, it's going to take on a whole nother revelation to you. I've been eulogized already. It's already I've been declared over my life what shall be. Glory to God. My job now is to walk this thing out by faith. That's my job. My job is to walk this thing out by faith, with by his grace on top of that. He gives me grace to walk this thing out by faith that he's already eulogized me for. Hallelujah. That's right. My children and grandchildren are blessed. You got to declare that thing. And what will be helpful many times is to declare how you have been eulogized or how you have been blessed. You begin to announce that before the manifestation, Sister Blanche, before the manifestation actually occurs, that's how you begin to, to walk in it. You begin to declare what thus saith the Lord. I peered into the seat of order eternal, and I caught a glimpse of heaven and what the will of God is for my situation. And I decided I'm going to say what God says. That's the secret to Jesus's power. I'm going to say what God says about my situation. And he looked into that bread and said, bread, guess what? Bread, guess what? I know when they were making you and taking all that barley and that common, common, common wheat for a common man, and they were making that bread, you had no idea and you were going to feed 20,000 people a day. But I got news for you. You just got a promotion. You're going to do more than you've ever done before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. But this comes out of communion, folks. This comes out of communion with the Father in Jesus' name. It comes out of that place. This is not, this is not just a self-help popular psychology grab, and we're going to kind of add these principles and sprinkle some Jesus around it and now say we're, we're, we're Christians and, you know, it's everything we do is in the Bible. That's not what we're talking. We're coming out of that place of com deep communion with the Father in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm telling you right now, listen to me, listen to me, and please, please, some of you do it really well. You do, you do right and testify, but I want everybody to do it. Hear this. Let me tell you something. I'm just telling you, which was just in hot. I'm telling you, just hot off the off the press. I am telling you. Listen, there is such a surprise coming to some of you that are watching and listening right now. It is going to shock you. I'm talking about the blessedness, the manifestation of the eulogy. It's going to shock you. You think you're in faith for it. I am telling you, when God does what he's going to do, it is going to cause you. I, somebody already testified to this a couple months back. 
it's going it's going to shock you to the point with your your mouth is going to be wide open you're going to have to cover your mouth and say i do not believe what i just saw the sudden reversal of things is going to be so profound because out of your spirit, you're, you're announcing the will of God on the earth. You are declaring the will of God on the earth. Can I get scripture for that? Of course I can. Did not Jesus say, this is how I want you guys to pray. Kingdom come, thy will be done. On what earth? As it's where? In heaven. That ought to be the announcement. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you. It's going to shock you. It's going to be a shock to your So You're going to have to sit down. People are going to ask you, what is wrong? Are you okay? They're going to start bringing you water. And they're going to start. They're going to start fanning you, talk about, they're going to start fanning you, talk about, is she okay? Is he okay? Is he okay? <laughs> you hear me? I'm telling, glory to God. But hear this, hear this. He received the bread. You got to give Jesus what you're working with. You got to get God's mind. Get God's mind. Announce God's mind, God's will, God's word into your situation. Interject that into the situation. Interject the will of God. Interject it. And then do not be shocked if it gets a little tougher before you get your breakthrough. This is where many of us fall off, you and yours included. You get a bad word on something, you get something negative, something contrary to what you're dealing with and experiencing, and you abandon hope. You cast away your confidence, as the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25. You cast it away. No, 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 no. And the way you hold on to it is you come right back with another confession over it. You come right back and say, yeah, okay, I feel that, two flat tires. Okay, I got two flat tires for you. you mess around, I'm going to get four new tires. Keep it up, right? And you begin to announce the will of God in the situation and say, guess what? My day's still blessed. Two flat tires waiting on AAA. I'm st you know what? I'm My day is still blessed. It's still going to be the greatest day of my life. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. And then the final element of this, though, we're in Mark chapter 6, verse 41, 42. The final element of this is after, after the blessing, after the breaking, then there was a distribution. In other words, you've made the grand confession. You have declared the word of God into the situation. You have eulogized your situation. Now do something. That's the key to the whole thing, man. Do something. Get up. Are you hearing me? Right? Do something. This is this is it's a critical element, but often miss miss um, um, I won't say misappropriate is not the right word, but misunderstood element. Do something. Talk about an antidote to anxiety. Do something. You feel that thing coming on you? Get out of bed. Con confess God's word over you. Stand in that mirror with tears coming on your face and say what God says about you. Stop saying, I can, I can, I can. If you can utter the words, I can, you can utter the words, I can. Stop it. If you can, listen, if you can, if you can tell me what you can't do, you can also tell me what you can do. Start beginning to speak that thing. I'm talking about real stuff here, folks. I'm not talking about anybody can prophesy in, 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 on the mountain experiences. But can you prophesy in the valley? Can you declare God's will over your situation when there's, listen, no hope evident whatsoever? Can you say what God says about it? 
one of the things that I'm doing in our in our fast, you know, is 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 I I just I just I just I just want confirmation on the word of God and the will of God on some things. Because I'm I'm gonna stay with what God says. End of story. I don't care what it looks like, right? Right? Do something. Right? Do something. Do something toward the, 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 the vision, toward the will of God, toward the thing you saw when you peered into the seat of order eternal. Do something toward that thing today. Make another phone call to them. You believe God's going to open up business for you? Do something. Go read a book. Read a page. Read a pamphlet. Google something. Do something. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to glory to God. Can you prophesy to dry, white, bleached, dry bones? Can you prophesy? Are you hearing me? Can you speak to that? God, speak to that. Stop speaking what you got. Speak, speak what you see. But 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 you're telling me I, I see brokenness. No 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 no. What you see or what you saw in your communion, speak that. Glory to God. Instead of cursing your children, by keep announcing how off they might be and wrong they are, speak life over them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of speaking over your spouse who is outside of the will of God or off, off in some ways or doing things, getting on your nerves, hurting your feelings, whatever the case is, speak life. Speak life. As R.D. Caldwell Jr. reminded us last Friday, death and life are where they reside in your mouth. You're going to live with it, right? Speak what you see from the Father, man. Hallelujah. Every one of us needs to be reminded of that, though. Every one of us. I really shouldn't say it. I can't, I can't speak for everybody. But I, I know I need to be reminded of that probably on a, not probably, on a daily basis. On a daily basis, I have to be reminded. I've got to speak my future, not my present. I got to prophesy to myself. Hallelujah. Hence the morning decrees. The morning decrees aren't something we do because we have nothing else to do. Morning, morning decrees is because we, we have nothing else better to do. <laughs> you hear me? Right? Nothing else better to do. Why? Get my head right, my heart right, my mouth right. Right? Lining myself up. Get my courage, get my courage together. Lord, you can't accomplish anything of any significance or any value. You can't overcome stuff by just complaining about it and moaning about it and pity partying about it and sitting there talking about it. You got to start prophesying into your dry bones. You got to speak. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I think there's some people watching right now who are catching this revelation like for real, for real. And you, you go ahead with it. I was going to say, like we used to say back in the day, you go ahead with your bad self. You go ahead and start speaking. Listen, you, you don't got to get it on a megaphone. You don't have to. You, you do like the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. When she finally rolled and found Jesus in the neighborhood, she kept saying to herself, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She started saying that, Sister Carol, she started saying that. She started prophesying to herself, absolutely. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'd be made whole. Crowd bumping against and knocking around. If I could just touch the hem of his garment. In her head's playing the fact that I spent every dime I got on position didn't get any better. And, and, and if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I should be made whole. She's weak. She's anemic. She shouldn't even be out there according to, to Levitical law. But yet she's out there. Right, and sometimes you gotta do that. You got you gotta do that. You gotta do that when you when you're taking the body shots. You gotta do that when it's when they don't look right. You gotta do that when uh, you you got you just have to you just you just oh glory. You just gotta you know. I know that's not pretty. This is not real pretty, and it's really not good preaching. You know per se, it's not very entertaining. But but I'm just telling you, it's like that. It's like that sometimes. It's like that one sometime. 
when you pull the covers over your head and you got to prophesy to the pillow. Are you hearing me? Right? I'm just telling you how it goes down. When you don't have enough money to get across town right now, but you got to prophesy to you that you can simply say that a better day is coming. Right? Glory to God. I thank you that my seed is in the, in the ground and my seed is coming forth in Jesus' name. Right? You don't got you don't got to you don't got to have 15 people to give you 15 likes on that either. You don't got to worry about all that. You just got to be got to stay in the cut. Are you hearing me? Right? And it's most important in my opinion, most important to do this when you're facing clear obvious deficit. Clear and obvious deficit. Not enough money, not enough emotion, not enough time. Situations crazy on the job, situations crazy at home, situations crazy with the kids, the grandkids, the great grandkids, situation, right? When all of that's going left is when it's, in my opinion, most important that you make sure that you are saying what God says based upon what you saw in your communion. Goes back to that, doesn't it? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God shall supply. All of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul penned those words while sitting in a Philippian jail. He wasn't sitting on a mountaintop. He was sitting in a jail locked up. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> the Apostle Paul, while sitting in the jail, says, be anxious for nothing. But through prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. I'm going to let my request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall guard my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. What was he doing, folks? He was saying what he heard from the Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, this this, this done messed me up this morning. I don't know what to do with myself right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? And my God shall supply all my needs. Glory to God. Don't worry about it, Jade, right? Don't worry about what other people say about your confession, right? You stay in the cut. You stay in that space, right, Leslie? You got to stay in that space. You got to, tears coming down the face. Say what God says. Say what God says. Stick with what God says. Glory to God. No demon can bind you in the name of Jesus. You hear me? I said it. No demon can bind you in Jesus' name. Say what God says. Say, boy, you better get off me. You better back up, right? Speak to your situation. And my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Do you also know that God has already, he has already provided for you? Whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, he has already provided for you. Whatever it is, he is already, he's already got the people, got the places, got the situation. Whatever, whatever, it, he's already got it, right? And, and you will live up to the level of your confession and not a degree above it. So you must speak what God says, to get what God has for you. Did you hear that? We must speak what God says in order to get what God has for us. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Man. Wow. Glory. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. There's somebody who heard a diagnosis that says, listen, in a matter of time, you will be in a wheelchair. You've heard that. You've heard that diagnosis. But I say to you, in Jesus' name, that will not be your future. That is not going to be your portion. Curse that thing now in Jesus' name. There'll be a retardation of that progressive illness, and it shall regress. It shall retard. It shall go the other direction. You will get better and you shall get stronger. Speak over your limbs. Speak over your body. Speak over your nervous system in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you right now. Somebody said they, were, they told you you'll spend the rest of your days in a wheelchair. And I am telling you, you speak the thing over your life in Jesus' name. Glory to God. But it cannot be just because you heard me say it. 
You got to get that out of your communion with the Father in Jesus' name. Glory, glory to God. Man, shoot. Wow. Glory to God. I'm telling you, man. Glory, glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to God. I'm telling you. It doesn't, it, listen, listen, listen. It doesn't even, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter. When you get God's mind on the situation, it doesn't matter how deep the deficit is. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant at that point. It's irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. Speak what God says about and into your situation. Speak what God says into your situation, especially as it relates to you. Are you hearing me? Because you have control over you rather than, of course, you don't control other people because that's called witchcraft, right? So we don't do that. But when it comes to you better speak that thing over your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It shall be even as was spoken unto me by the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory. You speak over that thing. Glory. Bless the name of Jesus. All right, folks. Glory to God. Man, I need to lay down right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Speak over your life. Declare the word of the Lord over your life. I'm telling you, it's a difference. Hallelujah. All right, folks. Listen, I got to rock and roll. And um, thanks for coming on this morning and being part of the morning decree. Thank you so much for those of you who are who have been praying. I think everybody's been praying for for this next missions outreach to the Philippines. But I'm praying, um, and I want to thank you for your giving and um, your support and um, sowing seed. But what I'm praying for, for each of you, particularly that sow, are that there'll be a manifestation of harvest in your life in such a way that you will know you have done the right thing when it came to sowing. I'm praying that you have a no-sow experience. K-N-O-W. A no-sow. Like, I know this worked, right? Experience. As you sow. And that you don't minimize the, the amount that you sowed. I had someone send $2 yesterday. And it's so, so moving. After PayPal took their money out, it was $1.69. Are you hearing me, right? It was so moving, though. You know why? Because when a person gives $2, they take the time and effort to give $2. Tells me something. It tells me that that person is using their faith. Now, that can also be for someone who gives $500 or $800 or $1,000 or $1,500 or $5,000. <clears throat> they could be using their faith too. But my point is, don't minimize what you give. God's giving you credit for the willingness to give, number one. But your giving, collective giving, is what makes it possible to bring salvation to thousands and tens of thousands of people. Are you hearing me? And, and the manifestation of Jesus to tens of thousands of people. As we saw in the beginning of this morning, right? I asked how many have been healed through a morning decree. And people in the dozens, I didn't count them all, but in the dozens testified, yes, me, 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 me. So so, so we know that the word of God is true and, it, and it's working. But this gospel needs to be taken locally and globally, simultaneously. And so as we up Williams Global and, and really get our identity and our bearings in terms of how to do this globally and, and yield to the other opportunities that are coming through through um, internet television and, and radio and other things that are going on, we can get the gospel to people to bring 
chance to salvation and change. Um, but it's your sowing that makes it happen. So I just want to say thank you and, and give you a little further explanation of that. So thank you very much uh, for that. Amen. Uh, our Friday fast, bit.ly slash 52 day fast. Do not forget that. Do not sleep on that. Week 11, let's go. Let's go deep. We got to rock and roll. So love you all. Have a wonderful day. And remember what? Jesus is alive. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, I would love to hear your testimonies. It would be very helpful. And if you don't mind, maybe I can quote you in our books or publications. And I'll encourage other people. All right. Hey, Mom and Dad, I love you. Dr. Judith, blessings to you. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Remember what? Jesus is alive. Amen. Listen, one final thing. Listen, some of you, you know right from wrong. And you need to come out of um, a, a, a sinful relationship. You know it's wrong. You need to come out of that thing in Jesus' name. This is for somebody who's either watching live or by replay. But I just felt a pressure on that. If you come out, you'll be going to realize great blessing in your life. If you don't come out, you're going to find, I'm not talking about a marriage now, I'm talking about other type of relationships. If you don't come out, you're going to find, you're going to wish you had. I'm telling you. All right? Love you all. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, Jesus is alive. Bye now. Let's see, this is.